Good afternoon, everybody. Can everybody hear me okay? Well, welcome to uh, this year's membership seminar. I'm so gratified to see um, nearly a packed house here. It looks like folks are still coming in. Um, it, it warms my heart truly to see uh, that membership in our fine organization is so important to so many others. Uh, and I see that every single day at, when I go to work. Um, my staff relay stories all the time uh, of folks in our membership that call and uh, are just grateful of, of the work that we're doing. And the only thing that we can think about is how grateful we are for all of the work that you all do every single day out in the field. So. I really, really appreciate all of your efforts on a daily basis. I um, just want to take a quick uh, moment or two to introduce a few folks. Um, <clears throat> to my right, I have my esteemed interim membership committee. They've been so incredibly valued as they've worked on a number of projects uh, with us over the past year and offered advice and counsel as we've uh, moved throughout the membership year. Uh, so if, uh, hold your applause until the end, and then I'll let you uh, tell them what you think. Um, to my immediate right is uh, Melissa Tank Hernandez of the great state of Missouri. To her right is Joy Leapart from Arkansas and Mr. Flores from California. The interim membership committee. <laughs> I also want to take a moment to thank uh, a couple other individuals that do a tremendous job in supporting membership, uh, and I'm going to embarrass them and make them stand. But uh, first of all, my membership manager at national headquarters, Robin Higgins. Yes, it's, come on, Robin, you can stand up and let everybody see you. She keeps me out of trouble. That's an awful big job, too. Yeah, <laughs> you're not supposed to agree, Robin. Uh, and then, of course, uh, a business analyst. A lot of you were in the portal seminar the other day. She does a tremendous job, uh, business analyst at uh, national headquarters with our statistics and whatnot, Heather Kohlmeyer. <laughs> so we, d we definitely have a lot to get into today that's new, but I wanted to wrap up a couple of things uh, for us this year. So, of course, we had another ever more successful March Membership Madness tournament. Uh, this past spring, um, and for those of you who might not be familiar, what we do is try to incentivize uh, online recruitment. All of the metrics tell us that the more folks we can get signed up online with credit cards, uh, the better we're going to do. Uh, there's a, a proclivity for folks just to uh, become full life members right out of the gate uh, when they use a credit card, and they're exponentially more likely to convert from part life to full life membership if we can get them on those recurring installments because, you know, to use a military term, it's fire and forget, right? Uh, so if we don't have to send them the uh, recurring quarterly statements and, and worry about them sending us a new check, <clears throat> that's certainly helpful. So to try to encourage that online recruitment, only online rec uh, memberships count towards this tournament. Uh, so we recognize the department as a whole, so we're appreciative of all the chapters, uh, you know, supporting their department's effort. Um, this year, again, we had Missouri as our winner. Uh, they did another great job. I mentioned this in our membership awards luncheon a few minutes ago, but our national service officers in Missouri recruited over a thousand new members this year alone. So if we want to give them a round of applause for that great effort and the whole department as well. Uh, so we have a couple of different awards that we offer for March Membership Madness. Of course, there's the department champion, the department that makes it from bracket to bracket to bracket and wins the championship game. And if you have a, an off couple few days uh, during the tournament, I don't want you to stop recruiting. You can still be the, the department MVP if you have the most overall new memberships. So. Um, you know, keep, keep recruiting even if you get knocked out on the brackets. Um, we also recognize our top two individual recruiters, um, you know, with uh, iPads. So it's, it's pretty exciting stuff and we offer some administrative uh, support with a couple of uh, Office Depot gift cards to the winning departments as well. So 
remember, any online recruiting platform can be used. And I want you to tuck that little tidbit away as I share some new stuff that you are going to see for the very first time here. <clears throat> I also wanted to remind, some, uh, remind you of some things that we've done uh, to kind of enhance our, our membership uh, goal. So we're working under a new dynamic, have been for a year now. Uh, we think it's been very successful. Uh, so we're really going to challenge ourselves this year uh, with our recruiting. But I just wanted to remind everybody that conversions from part life to full life membership no longer count towards your goal. We still want to have internal strategies on how to uh, get people to convert from part life to full life. And that's where trying to make sure we get them signed up with that credit card comes in, right? That's a big part. But new paid members. Uh, are what we're counting towards goal. So whether they're new part life members or new full life members, that's what counts uh, towards our recruiting goal. So uh, if you're a chapter uh, that has a, a, what seems to be a large goal, I want you to remember and share this with your fellow chapter members and the folks in the department that the, the part life members count towards goal as well. We understand that not everybody can reach into their pocket and pay the full life amount out of the gate, but get them on those recurring payments and on those installments, and it goes quick. It really does. Um, so we now base our goal on what we call our hot list. So what we're essentially trying to do is drive goal based on real world numbers. Uh, so if you live in an area that has a higher uh, population uh, for uh, veterans in your area that are eligible for membership, your goal is probably going to be more substantial than an area that has a lower uh, veteran per capita population, right? So we want to make sure that uh, folks that have got a lot of low-hanging fruit around them, um, you know, uh, try to snag a, a bigger bushel there, if you will. So um, the way that you can do that is to just give us, uh, let us know that you, uh, you're after a, hot, a copy of your hot list, uh, and you can use the uh, membership list request form. You've got to request it from us. We don't have a way to push that out automatically to you. Some chapters, you know, if you're in Baltimore, for instance, would be the list would just be mammoth and, and really unmanageable, uh, and you probably wouldn't be able to, to fully utilize it uh, anyway. Uh, so we want to, you know, kind of massage the list with you and, and get you a couple few zip codes at a time. But give us a... Um, and I'll show you the, the membership list request form here in a moment, but you know, give us a call, shoot us the list request form, shoot us an email, however you want to request it from us, and we'll get it to you. Um, hopefully, once we get into what we're calling our new CRM, um, it, the new system that's going to replace not only the membership system, but a lot of our legacy systems at headquarters, I'm hopeful that I'll be able to somehow employ true geocoding and some other uh, neat tricks to leverage technology to make this stuff a little more automatic. But uh, for right now, just you know, get a hold of us at headquarters and we'll get that shout out to you. Um, and please remember, this is an evolving process. Uh, you know, we're tweaking things here or there. Uh, you all have just been tremendous and given us great constructive feedback on how we can make this process better. And I continue to welcome that. So this is the membership list request form. Um, you can request request any list with this. Um, certainly, the hot list or just one of your your membership list, um, another kind of prospect list, whatever it may be. There's there's a drop down where you see select there. Uh, there's a number of lists that you can request. Uh, complete that form in the lines at the bottom. Just let us know what zip code you're looking for. Again, if you're coming from an area that's uh, utilizing multiple zip codes, just choose one or two, and we'll shoot that to you. If it's, uh, if it's uh, you know, not enough, if you run through that list, we'll be happy to shoot you some more. It's, it's not an issue. Um, <clears throat> but certainly, uh, we're trying to turn those around as quickly as possible. I've had a number of people come up to me since I've been here and say, Doug, I emailed the list, and I had, I had my zip codes uh, hot list request back in just an hour or two. So it's working really well. Um, when uh, Executive Director Barry Jesenowski did his report this morning, he shared this video, but I wanted to share it again because I'm, I'm very proud that we were able to produce this, and a lot of times we get uh, questions uh, when we're on the field as recruiters, well, why does DAV have dues? You know, there's other organizations out there that don't have dues. 
Well, they, are, they have a little bit of a, a different model than we do. In this, this membership video, it's really designed for social media, so I'd ask you to share it as often as you can. Um, and it just does a great job of kind of explaining what we do with membership dues and how DAV is kind of different from the other guys. Military service ingrains in all of us that we're stronger together. And membership in DAV builds upon that precept by leveraging our strength in numbers to empower us through camaraderie and legislative action. But did you know that you're also helping fellow veterans with your DAV membership dues? While part of your dues helps produce DAV Magazine, which keeps you informed about topics important to you and your family, a portion of these funds are also redistributed to your departments and chapters to directly support DAV programs and services offered in your community. Membership dues can help purchase vehicles that transport veterans to and from VA medical appointments. They can provide supplies for service officers and support initiatives to assist homeless veterans. And they can be used to support our incredible network of volunteers as they help take care of those who served our nation. But most importantly, your local DAV leaders help decide how these funds are used as they identify the greatest needs of the veterans in your area. DAV's programs and services are free to those who use them, and membership dues are one way we all help ensure DAV continues to be there in your community, fulfilling our promises to the men and women who served. Thanks for making a direct impact in the lives of fellow veterans. For more information, check out our annual report here. So good stuff, right? Um, you know, please feel free again to share that on social media as well as all of the other videos uh, that we have on our DAV YouTube channel. There's the um, value of DAV membership video that you know, very succinctly explains uh, what, eligibility, what the eligibility criteria for DAV membership is. Um, there, it all explains all of the benefits that are eligible to a member, well, a lot of them, but uh, certainly um, it gets, it's a great place to start when you're um, talking to somebody about DAV membership. So there's these tools out there for you. So uh, you know, please don't hesitate to use them. These are great things to share at chapter meetings as well. So uh, speaking of recruiting, recruitment points, uh, do me a favor and, and raise your hand if you enjoy using DAV recruitment points to purchase swag. Look at that, a lot of folks. Um, so remember, you can earn one to three recruitment points for every person that you recruit. If you recruit online, you can earn up to three. So again, recruiting online is, is ever important. So um, <clears throat> we uh, wanna encourage you to continue to, to earn and spend those recruitment points. Uh, but like a lot of, a lot of uh, you know, points ventures, whether it's airline miles or rental car miles or whatever it happens to be, um, points, need to expire at some point. We've been going many, many years with this program now, and we've got to the point where we have a lot of folks who recruited one or two members, you know, 10 years or more ago and haven't recruited anybody since, and that's not enough to buy anything in the store. Um, so, you know, DAV is a great steward of a very generous American public's funds, uh, and we want to continue to do that. So we have to be accountable for these points, so essentially a point is a dollar, so we have to be able to cash that out at some point. So that's why we need to announce that older points are going to begin to expire uh, on July 1st, 2020. So if any points are out there still that are older than three years, uh, next July 1st, they're going to expire. And then they will continue to expire on an annual three-year rolling basis. So when we cash in your points at the store, uh, we certainly use your older points first. But... Um, uh, we just, to, again, to be good stewards of organizational funds, we need to expire those points. Um, and I, I want people to use them. Uh, there is a detailed uh, magazine article in the most recent copy of DAV Magazine uh, that talks about this a little bit more, but certainly uh, use those points, and there's no better place to use them than right here. So uh, this is very exciting. What we've dubbed our recruit a warrior program. Um, how many people in here have used the uh, mobile applicate, DAV application to recruit people? Wow, great, terrific. Uh, so quite a few folks. Um, by the way, not to interrupt, I just saw someone taking a picture of the screen. I'm happy if you shoot me an email at dwells at dav.org. 
to share the slides with you. The only thing you won't get is the video because it's just too big. But I didn't want you to feel compelled to have to take a picture of each slide. Certainly uh, send me an email and I'll get that out to you. Um, <clears throat> so a lot of folks have used our application. and That was a great tool. Uh, we're, we're happy that we were able to put that out. But I think this is probably going to be a better option for you moving forward. So on this form, this is what we're, we're calling the uh, DAV Member Social Hub for Recruit a Warrior. Uh, and it is located at DAV.org slash warrior. So if you go to that site uh, and you'll notice a, uh, a part to put your uh, email address there underneath the, the three icons, the little um, envelope and bullhorn there and uh, the two people high-fiving or whatever it is. Uh, you put your, your email address in there. It'll essentially shoot you an email back uh, letting you know if you're good to go or not. Um, I'll talk about that more in a minute. But uh, the idea is that you can share a specific link, or pardon me, a link that is specific to you that every time somebody clicks on that link and completes an application, you will automatically get credit for that recruitment. So you'll be able to share this link right now via email, um, via Facebook, or via Twitter. Um, and these, the easy link uh, signs there at the very top of the, of the uh, social hub uh, will allow you to do that. So uh, you can also personalize your, your Facebook photo and other things through the hub. We'll continue to enhance that as we move forward. <clears throat> so as I mentioned, when you uh, enter your email address, you'll get back in one of two emails. One like this that says, hey, here's your Recruit a Warrior referral link. Um, so this is, again, unique to you as a recruiter. Uh, and it gives you different options on how, to, uh, on how to recruit folks and how to share. You can also just copy and paste that link and, and put it anywhere if they click on that link uh, and end up becoming a member. Uh, you're rocking and rolling, you're getting credit for it. So um, if you don't, uh, or if you're not currently in our online membership system, no worries, the system will let you know that, and it'll give you a couple of options. You may have put an email in that was not associated with your online membership, um, or you may not have bought a membership in quite some time. Either way, it's okay. You're just going to email our staff at... Um, Membership public at DAV.org at the membership department or give us a call and we can get you your link provided to you so you can still participate in the program. So you get one or two emails back, one with your link saying you're ready to, to uh, hit the ground running or another that's saying either try a different email or you'll just give us a call and we'll, we'll help you out, okay? But just because you get the second email, I don't want you to be deterred. Uh, give us a call and we'll get you squared away. So when you generate an email, this is what it looks like. And, you know, we've taken the liberty of, of providing you with some text. So if you know uh, Cousin Billy is uh, ready to be a member of DAV, you can uh, put his email address in, in there. It'll, where the blue is, where the from is, it'll show up for you, whatever email address you're using. And you're more than welcome to modify the verbiage a little bit if you want. Uh, if you think there's something that's uh, important for that person to hear from you, a personal story, whatever that may be, by all means, share that information with them and, and uh, let them know it's on the way and, and ask them to, to become a member. Join the Brotherhood and Sisterhood of DAV. So that's the email version. This is what it'll look like if you share it on Facebook, and you're certainly welcome to tag people in it. Uh, you know, so I'm, I'm hopeful that I will see this all over my Facebook wall. As I've been, uh, my wife and kids uh, came with me to convention, and they keep telling me that people are walking up to them going, hey, I know you, and it's through the Facebook page. So, so the word's, word's getting out. I really appreciate that. Um, but, yeah, this is what the Facebook uh, scenario looks like, and it will uh, allow you to, um, you know, share that on your social media, tag folks in it and and even people that you know friends of friends and all that good stuff with social media works could be exposed to this so it's really terrific and then finally uh, um, the this is kind of what the Twitter looks like 
Um, <clears throat> you know, the important thing is to, to, to share the link via your Twitter page uh, and you'll be able to, to, to uh, recruit folks that you may be uh, associated with on Twitter. So again, uh, dav.org slash warrior uh, is where you get to the site. If you have an issue, give us a call at national headquarters. And uh, we are officially going to launch. We're doing a soft launch with all you here. Uh, this is ready and open. You can certainly start using it right away. Um, but uh, to promote the program, we're going to do a little bit of a competition September 15th and November 30th. Uh, we're going to have a contest for a thousand bucks, a random drawing. So every person that you recruit, every new recruit you bring into DAV, you get an, an additional entry for a thousand bucks. This guy's saying he's already going to win. So I like it. Good stuff. So um, this is exciting stuff with something we've been working on for quite some time. I'm hopeful that it's very successful. Is, uh, is our CDR team in here? No? Yeah, they're out taking pictures. Okay. Oh, they are here. Why don't you stand up, guys? Wave. So these are our folks that helped develop this. Please give them a round of applause. And they may be asking some of you to, uh, to uh, help us with some future campaigns by way of taking some, some pictures. Uh, just make sure they, they get you from the good side, as I always say. Um, and uh, they, they love the, using some of our promotional materials for other campaigns that we're thinking about. So um, I appreciate all your support in that endeavor. Uh, lastly, I wanted to talk again about our member advantages uh, programs and all of our wonderful partners. Uh, we're certainly always trying to figure out what our members like, what our members need, um, and, and basing the, the, the relationships that we have with folks on that criteria, and, and also with organizations that respect the service and sacrifice of our members. Um, I, I would really encourage you to use these programs. If you have a need to purchase flowers or rent a car or move or whatever the case may be, uh, please utilize our member advantages program. Uh, there's a booth in, in the main hall about that as well. Um, you know, our partners, they just get elated at uh, the responses that they get from the emails and the click-through rates, you know, going through and looking at everything. Um, but we got to buy because the, remember, all of these programs, uh, the majority of them, uh, for every time you use that program and you purchase flowers, DAV gets a percentage of that deal back to further fund DAV's programs and services. So not only are you getting good flowers for mom or the wife or whatever the case may be, but you're also supporting DAV's programs and services. Uh, so please, if you're looking to buy something, uh, consider using the uh, Member Advantages partners. So I wanted to save time for questions as much as possible, and I think I've been successful. Do we have any questions? Yes, sir. I thought we had a mic in here. Did we not have a mic? No, okay. Yeah, so the question was, um, <clears throat> they're using their own email for chapter and uh, for chapter correspondence and uh, a personal email. So the answer to that to yours uh, right now, the immediate answer I think would be to utilize the chapter portal uh, more robustly and that could help you communicate easier uh, with your chapter members. That's a tool that we have. So what, he's saying, what he's saying is new members that we're signing up mm -hmm. are not computer savvy, so they don't have an email. Oh, okay. okay. Right. So what we're doing is we're using our personal email so that it goes through, and then when his membership and stuff comes, then we go back to that person. So you are signing up members online using your personal email address. Okay. Okay. Please don't do that. Don't do that. There is a naming scheme uh, that we have. It's first name, last name, zip code at davdonor.org. 
first name, last name, zip code, at davdonor.org. Um, so for me, it'd be Douglas Wells, 41042, at davdonor.org. If a person does not have a private email, <clears throat> you know, if you want to take a moment and set them up with a Gmail account or whatever, you're certainly welcome to do that. But you can use that naming scheme and be okay. You don't want to use your email address, and especially you don't want to associate your email address with multiple memberships. That causes problems for the online membership system because the email address is the unique identifier for that membership. And it causes all kinds of problems with the payments and whatnot. And I'm surprised Heather's head didn't like totally pop off her shoulders, but. Okay. Right. But we still, we still want to make sure each member we sign up online has a unique identifier. So use the first name, last name, zip code at davdonor.org. Okay? Any other questions? Yes, sir. Well, so obviously our donors are incredibly important to the national organization, um, and they uh, that uh, piece of the pie is, you know, financially speaking, is a whole lot bigger because it supports a whole lot of programs. Uh, you know, so we rely on a generous American public to make sure that we have the funds that we need, you know, to uh, ensure our programs and services are in the communities. So, you know, I, I don't know, here's the thing. Recruiting is so much more successful when there's a personal connection. When you reach out to somebody that you know is eligible for membership, embrace them and, you know, bring them on board and mentor them. We have great success, we're having greater success than we ever had with uh, <clears throat> donating, or pardon me, with uh, recruiting digitally. Uh, you know, through banner ads or um, other means, Facebook, things like that. But, and, and those folks have typically had some type of positive experience, whether it's through our transition service program, a national service office assisting them, getting a ride to the hospital, whatever it may be, um, or seeing the great work that we're doing, you know, before our elected officials. But I think on the whole, the greatest success that we have with recruitment is, you know, and having that person become a sustained active member in the organization are when we have that personal connection and they're mentored up in the organization. So I don't know that on TV would be the, the best medium to recruit folks. As I, as I mentioned earlier, there's a whole plethora of uh, resources on our DAV YouTube channel. Also, if you go to the members only section of DAV.org, all you need to access that is your uh, membership number. And we've actually just realigned that entire site now. Uh, there are a number of um, uh, resources to include webinars uh, recorded there that are able to be shared at chapter and department functions that I think are gonna be exactly what you're looking for. Yes, ma'am. We'll get you next, brother. Hi. So the, the question was, uh, there's some difficulty when uh, one of our members changes their last name and they, they continue to stay on different lists. So 
there's a scrubbing process that we put these lists through. And, you know, I mean, it's literally millions of names. Um, so sometimes we don't catch all of it. Uh, and I appreciate you bringing that to my attention. We're doing better with that. Uh, certainly, we want to make sure that our, our lists are appropriate. And the absolute complete intent of the hot list is to be the most current uh, list of viable uh, prospects that we have out there. And they're not folks that have been sent, you know, 10, 15, 20 solicitations over the last 25 years. We want them to be, you know, very, very current uh, new member prospects. So, yeah. So, um, yeah, so what he was asking is, can we put the DAV donor, uh, pardon me, the first name, last name, zip code, at DAV donor uh, scheme, saying put it somewhere? Just right on the site so we can just direct people to search it. Yeah, we can, we can figure out a way to, uh, to get that advertised. It's on a number of the seminars that I've done and, and webinars that I've done as well. So. And we're happy to share PowerPoint presentations for you all to share at your Department of Chapter Functions. Right, you're talking about a reminder on the actual application. Right there. Yep. My CDR folks taking notes. Um, All right, next question. I need to clarify something. Ooh. Oh. I just want to ask, um, just be sure. Oh, yeah. So it's not the f whole first name, it's just the first letter of the first name, in, correct? In the scheme? Yeah. No, like for me, it'd be Douglas Wells 41042 okay. at DAVDonor.org. That was question one. Question two is you said we could call the um, membership number. What is the headquarters? Membership. I mean, what's the headquarters number? Didn't I have it on there? No, I thought I had it on there. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Where? Yeah. There we go. Coming. It wasn't on membership. There we go. Oh, okay. Sorry. Can I get the mic? Sure. Thanks, Robin. Doug, Georgia Tanis, 123 Melbourne, right. Florida, uh, Merritt Island, Florida. Question I have is, when we're successful, when we set a claim in, if the claim is adjudicated, the veteran wins, you automatically send them a form, an application for membership. And as far as I can recall, there's nothing on there that says you can fill this out or you can go to your local chapter. So when you say we send them an application, you're talking about the national service officers yes. send them an application. Yes. Right. Okay. So we, our national service officers uh, do at times solicit folks that we're assisting. Uh, but when the membership application comes into headquarters, uh, our membership staff works very diligently to get them put in uh, to the chapter that's the nearest to them. Um, I know that doesn't always work out as the crow flies. No, I mean, we do from people all over the state of Florida. We do them from Georgia. We've done them as far as New York and Alaska. You're talking about recruiting? We do claims. And, right. uh, you know, that's our primary job. So, and here we are. They, they get an automatic letter from the NSO when they're successful, mm -hmm. and they try to put them in the closest so well, we're losing members well, by not getting Remember, it. the national service officers are now working on a queue, a nationwide queue. So we do a lot of representation that's digital now. So uh, a regional office, the VA regional office in Detroit may handle claims from Los Angeles. That doesn't mean that we as an organization are going to put them in chapters in Detroit. 
That's not how it works. So we try to put them in chapters that are close to their home of record, to their home, their home address. We also have a lot of snowbirds that come down and have us do their claims. Uh, understood, and, and we have a way in the system to recognize that. Is there a way that on that letter that you send and you include that the NSO send out, if not doing this online, you can go to your local chapter and they can f help you fill it out and get it sent in? Um, so. The, right now, I don't think that the system has the capability to do something like that, but we could definitely look at that for future iterations. Um, there's a lot of technicalities that go in there, but I appreciate the suggestion, for sure. Yes, sir. Doug, if I use the recruit, if I use the recruit, a warrior link, and I send it to somebody, and they sign up, do I get notified that they signed up, number one, and number two, are they put in my chapter? So they're they are going to go to the actual digital application right. uh, that we use for, it, it's a mirror of the exact same application that if you go to DAV.org and sign up, okay? So they're gonna be putting in their information, their address, all that other good stuff. It's just that your credit is gonna be given to you automatically. So again, we will put them in the chapter that's most appropriate for them. So if you've got a buddy from California that signs up, he's gonna be a member in California unless he chooses to be in your chapter. So do you send me confirmation that he signed up or how do I know that he did? So um, right now you're not getting confirmation for anybody okay. else that signs up, correct? Well, no, but I know if they sign him up because I'm sending the form in. Right, right. So no, that's something that I can talk to our CDR team though about uh, seeing if we can work out. But we'll definitely be tracking who's uh, who is signing up who? Other questions? Can we go back to that first slide, the uh, March Madness? Who is the runner-up on that? So, Georgia. Oh, all right. Way to go, Georgia. Watch <laughs> out, Missouri. That's it? <laughs> I like it. Yes, sir. All right, Doug, thank you for all this information this afternoon. Wanted to ask, if you send in a payment with, with the application and it does not go to your chapter, what, what happens to the payment? You know, does, does your chapter get the credit still? So Oops. you're, you're asking if, if you sign up a member mm -hmm. and do you want them to be in your chapter? Right. So was that indicated on the, on the application? Well, yes. And I had a couple where they did not uh, uh, get assigned to our chapter. So we didn't, our chapter did not get the credit money-wise. Yeah, I'd have to invest, have a specific example to mm -hmm. investigate. So if you come across that, or if you can tell me exactly who you're talking about offline, I okay. can look at that. But yeah, typically, if you say a member is supposed to be, you know, belong to chapter one, and uh, we get the application and process it that way, they're in chapter one. So I, I, I just can't think of a way in which that wouldn't occur if it was annotated at the time we received the application where they belong to. Okay, but yeah, give me some specific uh, examples and we'll look into it. Yes, sir. Yeah, Doug, Fred Smith. I used to handle this years ago for the department, the membership. Do you guys still send out these big sheets in which you have to put them together like a puzzle according to zip code, prospective numbers, the so half and the full? So you're talking about the hot list spreadsheets? Yeah, the new ones. Do they have the same thing? Yes, it's yeah. So every year we ask it together. The, every year we ask the department to let us know what zip codes belong to what chapters. They know the lay of their land much better than we do from our vantage point in Cincinnati. So uh, we ask them to do that every winter as we begin our processes for the next membership year. So that continues to happen. Yes, sir. 
Afternoon, Doug. Afternoon. Uh, when you first were talking about the awards, you talked about populations in large cities mm -hmm. compared to populations in the smaller areas. Mm -hmm. uh, do you also have something in your database that shows how many chapters there are within a certain radius of that population? <laughs> right. So to, to kind of add to what I was saying earlier, and I appreciate the question, um, if you're a chapter in Killeen, Texas, where there's just uh, you know, a ton of veterans, um, you're obviously, your, your goal based on the hot list is going to be larger than if you're in a chapter in Rhode Island, let's say, right? Um, so again, that's why we depend on the departments to help us determine what zip codes belong to what. Now this isn't, this has nothing to do with the historic geographical boundaries of chapters, right? Because um, we know that sometimes there are our chapters that live in this same community and, you know, hey, don't come past High Street, that's my area, that, type, that sort of stuff for fundraising, right? Um, this has nothing to do with that. I mean, you know, zip codes don't care about those boundaries typically. So uh, that's why we rely on the departments to help us with that uh, decision-making process. Um, so basically, the, the, to answer your question directly, the, the chapter hot list, uh, you know, can have uh, prospects on it that are also on the hot list of another chapter because they share zip codes. You see what I'm saying? So what we feel like is whichever chip chapter gets to that prospect first wins. Yes, sir. Don Shank, Chapter 18, Shelby, North Carolina. I had a question in reference to an individual that had joined like 15 years ago but never finished paying out the membership. He come to our chapter and he joined and when we sent it in, he paid the full amount for his age at the time. And we sent it in, but they found out that he was in the nomad chapter. So that we didn't get credit for it. What do we need to do in a situation like that? And then how do we determine what uh, rate they should be paying? So if you have, first of all, if you have a suspicion that someone has been a member previously and their membership is now inactive, certainly give us a call at national headquarters and, and we can research that for you and give you all the answers to the questions you just posed. You know, where's this individual live uh, in respect to the DI, DAV? Um, how much do they owe on their, on their membership? And of course, we are only, we're still going to honor that original rate for which they signed up on. But the chapter would not, other than the future dues distribution that they're going to get by virtue of having that member in their chapter, there's no credit that's given for the conversion from part life to full life. I, I can't hear him. Can you get the mic back real quick? You had a follow up. Sorry. You're next. Do we have to do a transfer or do we just need to give him information for the chapter that he's joining? So if he's in the nomad, you, you need to do a transfer as well. Hi. Hi. Good evening. Deborah Carroll, Chapter 42, Texas. When we have a transfer, what's the time frame of that transfer being processed? So we do them as soon as we get them. Uh, it, typically, it takes not a lot of time at all, uh, but you know, not every day in membership is created equal. If we're in the member uh, middle of a large, you know, solicitation mailing coming back and uh, the member specialists are inundated with processing new application, that's a good problem to have, right? So, um, you know, it may take a little bit longer administratively for them to get to it than say in the middle of winter when it's not so busy. We're also doing a lot of other things uh, from the membership department, uh, such as texting to our uh, members and prospects uh, using a tool called Hustle. So if that, I appreciate you bringing that up because it reminded me of that aspect. Um, so if somebody says, hey, I got a text from somebody that said they're DAV, it's legit. It's coming from either the membership department or our fundraising department or could be voluntary services as well. So that's a great new tool. Uh, everybody knows what a, an app is uh, in terms of going to the app store, downloading an app. Well, all the research uh, tells us that uh, apps, you know, the return on investment is ever diminishing and you know I'm a prime example of that I got 
150 apps on my phone and I've probably touched five of them in the last year. So uh, typically after the first 30 days, you stop using apps. So the way folks like to communicate is through SMS texting. Uh, and we were very proud that we started with a, a trial program here in which we sent out to a couple hundred of our folks that came through our transition service program. Not one of them opted out. Some of them were surprised to get the text. Uh, once they figured out we were legit and we communicated with them, they were all very appreciative that we had reached out and continued to extend DAV's mission of service and hope to them. Not one person opted out from our texting program. So that, that speaks highly of the service that we offer. Any other questions? Hey, Doug, thanks again. Um, <clears throat> regarding the- I'm gonna, start, I'm gonna start charging. Yeah, you, I'll, I'll, I'll pay you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, I just sent out that at-large list to all of California. Now, just last week, I got a call from one of the chapter commanders asking about how we delegate the zip codes. And so I worked my way through that. However, the next thing he brought to me was that there were probably 14, 15 people on his list that were active members that attend meetings, that go out into the community and work with him, including himself, the chapter commander, that are on that at-large list. And so we talked about the whole uh, transferring of membership from at-large to his chapter. Mm -hmm. Now, he shouldn't be on the at-large list at all because he's been an active member, he's paid his dues, and so all this criteria that I found out from National last week, um, he doesn't fit the bill and nor do 70% of the individuals that he brought to me. So I, I understand that we still have to move him um, through the process, but how are we, how should I, as somebody who's at the headquarters level, level delegate this for 450,000 people. Right, so uh, obviously uh, three important things there, uh, training, training, training. Um, it's just getting the word out to the chapter members. The only time that a member, uh, remember, it, uh, can choose where they go is when they buy the, initially buy their membership. They get to pick what chapter they belong to. Uh, subsequent to that, we have to have an approved transfer request because the chapter that they're looking to get into has to approve that. They have to accept that member into their chapter. So we've got to have those transfer forms completed. Uh, you and I were talking about this the other day that uh, that's why it's so important, you know, we want to do all we can if a, if a chapter is struggling a little bit, we want to do all we can to revitalize that chapter and get it reactivated. But at the end of the day, if, if the chapter uh, is no longer viable for whatever reason, we don't want to just shutter the chapter. Uh, in the strongest terms I can possibly lay out, I want to merge that chapter with another chapter. Even if it's not completely geographically convenient, it's so much better to merge the chapter uh, with another active chapter so that one, we can continue to pay distribution on those folks because once they go into at large, nobody else is getting distribution, right? Uh, from the chapter. But secondly, all the numbers I look at tells me that once somebody ends up in the at large, in the national at large chapter, the likelihood that they're going to reactivate into the local chapter is, is slim. So uh, everything that you can do to help us with that, I'd appreciate it. Um, so we're starting to run a little bit over here. I'm going to take one or two more questions and then uh, we're going to call it an afternoon. Yes, ma'am. I have a quick question. Sharon Billadu, Colorado Springs, Unit 26, uh, Auxiliary. But do I go to the same website to pick up our at-large members or our people like that and use the same form for the zip codes? Yeah, that same membership uh, request list, you can request an at-large uh, listing of those folks that are in your chapter's jurisdiction. Absolutely. Yes, sir. One more over here, and then we're going to, uh, I'll be around for individual questions for a little bit. Leave that guy alone. I'm Thomas Harper. I'm with uh, Chapter 126 in Baytown, Texas. Hi, Thomas. How are you doing? Good. I started a recruitment program that we uh, started back in March when you were having your March Madness uh, membership drive. And uh, we managed to sign on three new members if our when our chapter we had a we had uh, food and and we invited 
local chapters around the area, Harris County and also in Houston. Uh, it was somewhat successful. I'm still continuing with that drive. Uh, is my question is, if you get so many uh, members signed up, do you get recruiting pins or uh, do you have that type of program? Recruiting, right. So recruitment pins? we have uh, bronze, silver, and gold stars for recruiting. Uh, and also we have the beaten pin, uh, where if you recruit 100 plus members, you're eligible for that. And that also puts you on path towards the Hall of Fame uh, if you do that three years in a row. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I just sent out a, a memo detailing all of the different awards. And there's also a premium recruiter award uh, that comes out as well. So uh, certainly um, uh, we do have a, a listing of all that stuff. And I think I just misspoke a little bit. It's so 99s for the beaten, yep. Um, so certainly um, uh, we're very grateful for all the hard work that our recruiters do and want to recognize them accordingly. So if you send me an email, I will share that memo with you so you know exactly what the program looks like, okay? So folks, a uh, couple of things. I'm going to put out some flyers here for our Recruiter Warrior program. Uh, so feel free to come up and take one. I also have some of my business cards here. And I and the rest of the membership committee will, will be here to answer some questions. Uh, it is my pleasure to serve you. If there's anything we can ever do, don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, you've got my name, you've got my phone number and my email. Thanks a lot, folks.